Good morning. Welcome to a cold and wet and cloudy day here in North Carolina. Today we're going to talk about photographing birds along the road. So come along and enjoy this adventure. If you watch my videos, you think that I spend most of my time out in the woods birding. And to tell you the truth, I do the vast majority of my birding along roads. Uh, for the simple reason, I have easy access to them. And you can get in and out and take pictures really easy. You don't need to trek miles into the woods or anything like that. And I think it's one kind of photography that almost anybody can do. They can do it from the inside of their car. They can do it walking along the road you can do it on a bicycle it's really easy access to these roads and i really encourage people to do this um and it's something that i've not done a video about because it's tough to videotape in public because people stop they ask what's going on and some people get upset that you're out there videotaping so you won't see me doing a lot of videotaping alongside the road but you will see me taking a lot of pictures along the road because there's a lot of good access to ha different kinds of habitats that you can easily access. talk about my settings today um, as you can see behind me it is a dull wet it's kind of a drizzly rainy day today so that's making everything very dark all the bushes and the branches are very dark they're brown black so to compensate for that and to get some halfway decent pictures I am shooting at ISO 4000 I have the aperture on this camera all up and all the way to um, 6.3 this lens is kind of slow um, and one thing I did do was I advanced my light meter about a third of a stop. And what that's going to do is make everything a little bit brighter because um, it's letting a little bit more light onto the sensor. And the reason I'm doing it is just because it's dark and gray. And it's kind of a hard decision to make because when you advance the light meter, it slows down your shutter speed. But there's a give and take. So the only pictures I'm going to be able to take today are kind of portrait pictures. When the bird stops on the side, on a branch or something like that, I can just take a picture like that. Well, I did photograph a white-throated sparrow White-throated sparrow is a pretty common bird here in North Carolina in the wintertime. Um, I haven't seen a lot of birds in this area here. I am going to move down the um, road a little bit more. Um, if you look at these power lines here, normally I'd be able to see some something on them, and it's just been really tough. Uh, and one of the problems I'm running into is I can't take pictures more than maybe 30, 40 feet away from me because this drizzle... Uh, that's falling down on top of us is acting like a white filter between me and the birds. An example would be I have some turkey vultures that have landed in trees behind me here and I just can't take a picture of them because this 
drizzle is acting like a filter and I'm seeing absolutely no detail in them. And because you got this gray sky behind them, it's not just a, a very good picture. But I did take a picture of a white-throated sparrow. I really feel like with this soft light, I mean, it's 11 o'clock in the morning right now, but this soft light is just incredible. I just feel like it's one of those days that you can just take an epic picture. So I'm gonna keep going here. I'm actually gonna move down this road here. Um, I'm really hoping I run into something that really gives me a really good opportunity to take a picture of it. Um, but you gotta stay positive in these situations. You just can't give up and say, you know, because I am cold, I am wet. Um, I haven't seen a lot of activity, but I just feel like it's gonna turn on any minute now. If I'm here, I'm gonna take a picture of a lifetime today. Well, I just photographed something that I have never seen before, and that is uh, crows attacking a vulture. I mean, yeah, crows attacking a turkey vulture. Um, usually these two species birds stay away from each other. It's not so much that the vultures stay away from the crows, the crows stay away from the vultures. I mean, vultures are definitely a harasser of raptors, uh, especially hawks, red-tailed hawks, shoulders, they'll, they'll harass anything like that. But vultures are something they generally don't harass. And the reason for that is the um, vulture is a big, stout bird. Unlike a hawk or, or even or a falcon, um, the um, vulture is just a big, heavy bird. It's not something that you can generally get away with attacking. Um, but, you know, there might be something wrong with this vulture here. Um, he does look like a juvenile. He has a big white streak on the back of his head. So that would indicate to me that he's a juvenile bird. Um, and he may just be not in a good way. Well, I was really hoping that before the rain came in this afternoon that this fog or drizzle kind of stuff would end, and it's not. The rain's coming in, and I'm gonna end the video here. Um, it's been an incredible day out here. Um, seeing that uh, crow attack that vulture was really exciting. Um, seeing that white-throated sparrow was good. I was disappointed that I didn't get an epic picture, but you know that happens more often than I care to mention. Uh, but I'm hoping you enjoyed this video. If you got anything out of this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to this channel because that really helps us in the YouTube world. Become a Patreon supporter. Your support allows us to keep doing this. Join us on social media. I post all my photos on social media. My name is Sean Leahy. I want to thank you for watching.